God, oh God. Come on and let's bless him in this place. Come on and let's bless him in this place. Give me heat flat, give me heat flat. Joy bells keep ringing in my soul. Joy bells keep ringing in my soul. Uh,
I just woke up a little churchy. I just woke up a little church. I just woke up. I just woke up. I got three people here. And they just think of the Christmas of supplied all your needs according to his riches and glory. Oh, I thank God. Come on, put those hands together just one more time. We're so glad to be in the service one more time. Turn it down just a little bit. Yeah. It's good to be here. Look at somebody tell them it's good to be here. We're so glad and happy to celebrate this reopening this rebirth this renewal I've been talking this is the jewel and this is the dolphin and I've been pushing don't let the work be in vain. Don't let the work be in vain. And sometimes, sometimes, sometimes we feel like just giving up. But what you have to really do is just think about where the Lord brought you from. Nobody told me the road would be easy. Oh, come on, somebody help me just say it one time. Uh, I don't feel no waste I come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me the road. No, no, no. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll be with you. Always. Even until the end of the world. When you get a heavy load, just cast your cares on him. Because he cares for you. I know you may not get it sometimes, but lean not to your own understanding. But in all your ways, just acknowledge him and he will direct your path. And after you've done all the things, just be like a tree. Oh, God. 
planted by the rivers of water that's gonna bring forth good fruit. In a season, a leaf will not wither, and whatsoever you do shall prosper. It's prayer time. It's prayer time. There's some in here who have just felt like giving up. Felt like throwing in the towel. Somebody in here is sick and tired of being sick and tired. Fed up with being fed up. Feel like Popeye. This is all I can stand. I can't stand no more. I dare you to bring your burdens to the altar and leave them here. So glad to have my good friend and Apostle Dwayne Thomas with us here today. As we get ready to come to the bell ring, if you got a problem, you got an issue, you got something, come, 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 come on right now. Come to the altar and, and bring it. Oh, I don't believe these problems to leave me. Come on, fortify yourself. Uh, I just came in from now. I'm trying to far from where I Most holy and gracious Father, we come to you today, first of all, God, to say thank you. Thank you, God. We thank you, God, because we realize this is the day that you have. Yes. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Yes, thank you. God, we thank you for the faithfulness of your people, God. Yes. That in spite of the trials and in spite of the tribulations, God, they decided to press on yes. to see what the end is going to be. And Father, as they press, Father, we ask you to touch them now. Give them strength beyond measure right now in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we ask you to touch First Lady Jewel right now in a special manner. That as she continue the dream of Bishop, oh God, that you will be her strength in the time of weakness. That you will be her joy in the time of sorrow. God, that you will lift her up, God, and let her realize that she's not by herself. But God, she got people that love her. She got people that care for her. That she got people, oh God, that will close their church doors and just push with her, God. Because God, we know that Bishop would not have given up. Given up. And we're, gonna, we're not going to let greater new life die. So God bless them right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, we thank you for this day, God. We thank you for Bishop Young, God. We thank you, God, for putting in his spirit, God, to press on, oh, God, greater new life and to push greater new life. Now, there's a reward for him now, God. Open the windows of heaven and pour him out a blessing that he shall not have room enough to receive. God, we want to thank you for all of those who have come for this day. And God, those who are standing at the altar right now, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, God, you made them. You know what about them. You know what they need before they even ask. And God, we ask you to move on them right now in the name of Jesus. Because somebody's depressed. Somebody's in trouble, God. Somebody's heart is hurting, God. Somebody don't know what to do. But God, we know that you're able to do anything but fail. So God, we ask that your spirit would just move in this place right now in the name of Jesus. God, we ask that your spirit would just lead and guide these uh, that are around the altar uh, right now in the name of Jesus. Uh, oh God, somebody needs you and can't make it by themselves. Uh, but you said that you will supply all of our needs. So God, we need you right now uh, to come into this place uh, and
Jesus. Say that the blood of Jesus is a fiction right now. And God, let your Holy Ghost rest rule and abide in this house. Let joy come into this room. Let peace come into this room right now, God. In the name of Jesus.
from Rochester, New York. Amen. Amen. Come on up here and say hello real quick. Yes. Come on and say hello. Come on. You give give the woman of God. Great <laughs> big hand. Amen. Amen. Bless you. Bless you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on. I know it's early, but I need everyone to stand to their feet and let's give God some glory in here. of my friend Bishop and to see his chair drape. It brings back so, so many memories. Yes. But I do know that he is sleeping. He's resting now yes. until the day of judgment. Yes. And when the day of judgment comes, yes. I can hear the Lord saying to Bishop, my friend, well done. Yes. My good and faithful servant. Yes. I praise God this morning. I praise him for his excellent work. I praise him for being in a place. And we haven't been here in a couple of good years because the pandemic has, a set, has shut us all down. I praise him that even though when he was sick, I was still able to talk to him. Bishop, whenever I needed him, one of my mentors. I believe during the pandemic, I lost two mentors. Only had two and lost them both. But I do know that all is still well with the Lord. But anyway, in our ministry, and I know a lot of us, we came to celebrate not only of the opening up of the church, but just to honor Bishop today. I know in this service, where all of, a lot of us didn't get a chance to do what we wanted to do. But today we can worship and we can praise him. But anyway, also, because I know that we came in, if you came in like me, there's some things we got to get on. And I know I, whenever I come here, I always say, Shonda. And I need everybody to stand to their feet. Because we're going to Shonda. And when Shonda is this, it's like turning around, turning things around in our life. Physically, we're going to look the same way. But when we Shonda, spiritually, there's something.
something going on in the spiritual realm. So when I say stand up, just begin to turn around and begin to see those things that you've been hearing and fall off. Stand up! Stand
with the Holy Ghost. And they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you give us a word that you may be glorified. The body may be edified and the devil horrified. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And all of God's people said amen. Before you sit down, I want you to look at three people and tell, tell them, get ready for a greater new life. Greater. Oh, thank you, God. Greater. 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 It's Pentecost Sunday. Yeah. It's Pentecost Sunday where we acknowledge and examine the work, the moving, and the coming of the Holy Ghost. Hold on, son. Hold on, son. And into the life of the church and into the life of the believers is not just Pentecost Sunday as the Holy Ghost came, but it is also the birth of the church. All right. And I find it in the divine appointment mm -hmm. that today, after two and a half years, we are celebrating the rebirth. Of greater new life. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. On Pentecost yes. Sunday. Yes, Lord. And I was sharing with some of the members how ironic it was that Lady Jewel called me yesterday. Some of the contractors are removing some of the tiles in this room, and they had disconnected all the organ, and the drums were all apart. There's wires everywhere, and it took me back to the Saturday before the first Sunday of this church when Reverend Livingston called me to come over to his house to make sure his organ was in tune <laughs> and that his mic was hooked up into his guitar amp in his living room. And that very next day, the church, new life, was born. Now, Pentecost is the day, 50 days after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, when the Holy Spirit comes. And it is that day that links the church to its Christ. Luke, unlike Matthew, unlike Mark, and unlike John, lets us know that the gospel story is not just that Jesus came, lived, died, and rose again. But Luke helps us to understand that the gospel must go forward. And so he shares with us the history of the church so we can become excited about our destiny yes. just as God shaped Adam out of the dust of the earth and yet Adam did not become a living being until God breathed his ruach into him in layman terms he blew his spirit which caused him to come alive so uh, 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 Jesus did the same thing by shaping and forming the church and paying for it with his blood. But it was not until the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came to breathe into the church that it would become a living entity. Amen. And unfortunately, Apostle Thomas, the Holy Spirit gets a bad rap. Come on. And because when you hear the word Pentecost, our first instinct mm -hmm. is to think Pentecostal. Yes. Come on. And, and when you hear the word Pentecostal, especially with your good Baptist ears, a whole other set of idi images and ideologies uh, come into your head. Yeah. Especially if you spend some time with some African American Pentecostal. Oh, yeah. Yeah. When, when you hear uh, Pentecostal, you might think of Worship service that lasts a mighty long time. And when you hear the word Pentecostal, uh, you thinking about women with white doilies on their head, dresses below the knees, and wearing stockings you can't, so thick you can't see through. When you 
think of Pentecostal, you may think about shouting from the time of call to worship to the benediction. Uh, you think about laps around the sanctuary and uh, uh huh, and you may envision preachers laying hands on folks and folks falling out on the floor. And you know you didn't have a good Pentecostal church because it wasn't about the Bible or the hymn book. It was some little white sheets in the corner. <laughs> Y'all not talking. We're talking back to me here. Uh, Y'all remember them little white sheets? Uh huh. That's that's when the sisters uh, uh, fell out at the altar, and you had to cover them up so that you you could cover up their private blessings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you hear Pentecostal, more than likely what pops into your head is speaking in tongues. Uh, because uh, 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 there are those in the Pentecostal side of, of the faith that argue that you ain't even saved unless you are filled with the Holy Ghost. With the evidence of speaking in tongues. Uh, Y'all know what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And when I was a kid, uh, the Pentecostals Everything was the devil. I mean, Joel, you couldn't even play marbles. Because the Bible said marble not. The preacher of the day thought the scripture said marble. Not marvel. You understand what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, yeah, they um, pulled the girls. They couldn't go to the movies because that was of the devil. Pulled folks, they couldn't even get a black and white TV because that was of the devil. Uh, women in pants was of the devil. If you wore, uh, if you wore makeup, you were considered a Jezebel. Come on, talk back to me here. And, and don't even think about walking across the pulpit or touching the communion table. You were on your way to hell. As a matter of fact, here's how I can tell if you got some Pentecostal in you. You ready? You ready? Is he the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. 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 See, if you if you said the Holy Ghost, you got a little Pentecostal in you somewhere. Yeah. See, see, see. I I, I grew up the old school Baptist, and we didn't embrace all the workings of the Holy Spirit. If, if, a, if a sister stood at the altar and she began praying in tongues, nobody would say nothing. Yep. But I can guarantee you this much. It was be brought up at the next church meeting. <laughs> she may not have been voted out, but she was probably encouraged or strictly uh, encouraged yep. not to come back. Y'all yep. not hearing me. Yep. Right. Because we didn't embrace right. speaking in tongues. And you know, I, I think it's kind of funny, uh, 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 Dwayne, because we didn't have no problem with smoking, drinking. You gotta preach! We didn't have no problem with one of those heated church meetings where the mothers was cussing and the deacons were fighting and the preacher was packing. Oh, help me, help me, help me. Yeah. You better tell the truth. And as a matter of fact, the history of this church and the vision of Bishop Livingston was to be more embracing of the Pentecostal nature of the Holy Spirit and its workings in the Baptist church. Because before it was greater new life, it was new life full gospel Baptist church that embraced a celebratory style of worship that was inclusive to not only a, a, a freedom of worship, but women in the ministry because a good Baptist didn't believe in women in the pulpit and the, and the sad part about it was they wouldn't have known that Jesus had risen if it had not been for three women and, 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 and so this church was founded where you know if you wanted to run run if you wanted to shout Shout. If you want to dance, dance. If you want to cry, cry. If you want to be solemn, 
Solomon. If you if, if you had the gift of tongues, speak them. If you had the gift of laying on your hands, lay them. And if you had the call to preach, whether male or female, preach. In other words, how Bishop Livingston felt about the matter of the workings of the Holy Ghost was do you. Oh, look at somebody and tell them do you. Do you. Don't, 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 don't get it twisted. To be Pentecostal is different than Pentecost. Yeah, to be Pentecostal is an expression of our thankfulness to God for all he has done for us. Uh, if I could scream at the top of my lungs when the bills make a touchdown, I can make a joyful noise unto the Lord. If I can get excited about some unexpected money, I can get excited about the miracles that God has worked in my life. If I can cry because I have received a special gift of love from somebody, I can cry because God gave me a special gift that died for my sins and rose one Sunday morning. And you want to know something? I don't need Sunday morning. Only thing I need to do is just think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me. And I'm sorry I got uh, Holy Ghost Tourette Syndrome. I guess I can't help it. I can't help to praise him. I can't help but to give him glory. I can't help to, to give him honor. I don't care where I am or what I, I'm going to give glory because he's worthy. Yes, Let me hurry up to my text. Let me hurry up to my text. Let me hurry up to my text. If, in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, before Jesus ascends into heaven, he stated, ye shall receive power. And after that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall become witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Yeah. Jesus gives the disciples a plan of action. The difference in between Pentecostal and Pentecost is the plan. The plan was not to waste your time proving to other saints how anointed you are. The plan was to get off the pew and take the gospel to the people. Yes. But before you can be anointed, you first need to be appointed. Amen. Notice what the text says. And you shall receive power. Power means authority. Power means you have permission. And you can only get that permission through the Holy Ghost. Uh, he is the only one uh, that can give you the release necessary to effectuate God's plan without being hired, without being trained, or without being sworn in. A police officer has no power, commission, or authority to detain you, charge you, or arrest you. Uh, they can have all the uniform they want and get a badge out of the cracker jack box. But if they are not hired, trained, and sworn in, they have no power. The same holds true with the church. Without the Holy Ghost, who is the authorizing agent of God, uh -uh, we are not even authorized or have permission. And maybe that's the reason we don't have power. Yeah. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, higher trained and sworn police officers are authorized and have permission, or in other words, have the power to detain and arrest you. But when they shoot you in the back, bust your head with a flashlight, or even worse, put a knee on your neck for 9 minutes and 29 seconds, that power is now abused and misused. And unfortunately, many of us in the church misuse and even worse, abuse our authority. See, 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 just because you are the president of the chicken frying committee, doesn't make you the boss. Just like being made a bishop don't make you no important than anybody else. Both are not called to sit on a throne. They are called to service. Oh, no, hell yeah. 
In other words, cook that chicken and preach that gospel. Y'all not talking back to me up in here. Look at somebody, tell them, cook that chicken and preach that gospel. <laughs> See, there is no need for the president of the chicken frying committee if you can't cook. And there is no need for no bishop or no preacher or no clergy and they can't preach. You better preach. And, 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 and ministry means service. Service to families. Service to communities. In other words, feed the hungry. Clothe the naked. Comfort the grieving. Visit the sick. Do it when you feel like it. Do it when you don't feel like it. Do it when it's comfortable. Do it when it's uncomfortable. Do you really think a police officer wants to run into an active shooter? Uh, uh, do you really think a firefighter really wants to run into a burning building? Do you really think a nurse wants to be anywhere around all your nasty kid diseases? Y'all not talking back to me up in here. No, 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 no. Because uh, of the authority and the permission they have, they do the work and they don't let the work do them. That's why, uh, yeah. But sometimes we have to comfort ourselves, preachers. And we have to comfort ourselves and encourage ourselves. Be not weary in well doing, for in due season you shall reap if you don't pass out. Look at your neighbor, tell them don't pass out. Uh, how do we get this power? How do we get this power? Two things and I'm done. First, we got to be in one place. The second thing we need to be is on one accord. Uh -huh. After this pandemic, it's like pulling teeth to get folks in one place. Honestly, it, it was rather comfortable uh, <laughs> preaching <laughs> in my pajama bottoms. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I, I get up, I get up. Right now. I, I put I put my shirt on, jacket on. I had my PJs on up underneath. Y'all not hearing me. <laughs> you got it right. <laughs> Slap some gel on the hair. You ain't hearing me. People are not as loyal to the church as they were. And the business of the week has made worship optional. And with the popularity of live streaming, many folk look at the closet, then look at the TV remote, and the TV remote wins. Luke gives us the impression that these people were scattered. And after the crucifixion of Jesus, some of his followers had probably given up. And he was gone because Jesus was gone and they felt that there was no one to follow. But let me encourage you, Greater New Life. The Holy Ghost will ensure this ministry goes on. Amen. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And all you have to do is first be in one place. And I know it's been two and a half years since you worship in this place. And some have scattered and went to other places. And even worse, are sitting at home watching us on Facebook right now. Uh, the object of the game is simple to be in one place. Place. Somebody shout pl one place. One place. And, 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 and if we could just be in one place, following the word, forsake not the assembling together of the saints together. Some days, I'm going to just let you know, there may be only two or three of y'all here. But, but don't get discouraged from where two or three are gathered in his name. Woo! God bless. There he is. In the midst of it. And it's actually rather, rather simple, uh, 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 Apostle Anderson, to, to get people in one place. What you got to do is feel. <laughs> the fellowship world used to serve continental breakfast. 
And then we, and then we give them full breakfast on first Sunday morning. Yeah. And yesterday, some of our members were giving away food in front of the church. The tables were full. But when when I left there, but when I got back, they were practically empty. And, and, and understand this. The blessing that came out of that experience was that the folks that we were feeding blessed us with their testimonies. One woman shared how her niece escaped the shooting at Tops. And as she told the story, she was standing on the corner of Humboldt and East Utica with her hands in the air, tears coming down her face. She began to thank the Lord that her niece was looking for Scott's tissue, uh, uh, which was in the front of the store, but she couldn't find it because she was in the back of the store. Y'all not hearing me. Uh, another man walked up and, and he had been there earlier and he pulled up in front of the church and he came running out of his brand new vehicle and, and, and with a financial donation to bless the church and he said y'all didn't think I was coming back here but I had to come back around here because God's been good to me I was in jail for 40 years I've only been out 18 months, but God did me like Job, restored everything. Everything that I lost. Ah, uh, and secondly, you have to be on one accord. Now, now let me tell you this, and that's harder, because it's hard to get people to agree. Sometimes you are not in agreement with yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Step number one. Get yourself together. Yeah. Lay hands on yourself and say, I got to get myself together. Yeah. You need to get your mind together. You need to get your heart together. You need to get your emotions together. You need to get your spirit together. You need to get your finances together. You need to open up your ears. Open up your mind and practice keeping that big mouth shut. Somebody tell I gotta get my stuff together. Woo. Let's be honest. You can't be an usher with a nasty attitude. You better say that. You can't be a praise and worship leader and you are not a praiser or a worshiper. an intercessor and you can't pray 15 minutes without falling asleep you can't lay hands if you got dirty hands I might as well go all the way you can't preach holiness and you still tipping dipping, ducking, dodging crossing, crossing, lying cheating, gossiping, fornicating and adultery Somebody said, I got to get myself together. Step number two. Come. Let us reason together. You have to have an open mind. A contrite spirit. A loving heart. A compassionate soul. You got to be open to the leading and the guiding of the Holy Ghost. You need to be surrendered to his will and to his way. And then suddenly. <laughs> see, see, you don't, you don't get this. You don't get this. You don't get this. See, 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 once we stop fighting each other, we can pull together. Because one could put a thousand to flight. Two could put... 10,000 to fly. We are just come together. How can two walk together if they don't touch and uh, come on now, talk back to me. We, we need to come and reason together and then suddenly the Bible says a sound of a rushing mighty wind will fill the room and there will appear cloven tongues 
as a fire and it'll set upon each of us and we'll all be filled with the Holy Ghost the purpose of the Holy Ghost is simply to make you holy the old folks used to say what is this that makes me feel so good inside what is this makes me want to run anyhow whatever it is it won't let me hold my peace the Holy Ghost will make me love my enemies it'll make me love my friends and it won't let me be ashamed now you heard that they began to speak in other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance I can just imagine there were some Germans there and they began to say we the Goldberg as there were some Spanish folk that said Rina Tito Nadi Nidio there were some Indonesians that said La Hia Laga there were some Italians and they said Rinita Renata there were some Latin folk they said Natas the Neo there were some Swedish they said Hanitakfad well never been to Germany never been to Puerto Rico never been to Indonesia never been to Italy never been to Spain never been to Sweden I was born and raised in America and I'm not ashamed to say I've been born again that's all they were saying I Again. Have I got any born again? People in this place uh, that can wave their hands and not be ashamed. Uh, let the world uh, uh, As each person began to speak in the language that those who are around them could understand. Whew, oh, good God Almighty. 3,000 people came and accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Do you want to know something, Bishop? I know we old school. We real old school. You are. I don't think I'm more old school than you are. But well, we need to learn how to talk to some of these young people. Yeah. We can't keep downing them. Amen. We need to encourage them. Yeah. Yeah. And we we'll lift them up. Maybe they'll lift them pants up. Y'all yeah. not hearing me. Y'all 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 not hearing me. If we can stop downing our young ladies, maybe they'll keep their skirt tails down. Y'all not hearing me, y'all not hearing me, y'all not hearing me. And at the end of the day, the Bible says, the Lord added to the church daily as such should be saved. The reason why the church is not added to daily is because we're not telling people that we've been born again. Tell your neighbors, tell your friends, tell those people that you encounter wherever you do that you love the Lord and you're not going to take it back. And when you do that, you will find out that God, God will add to the church daily. It may not be new life, it may not be God's way, it may not be fellowship world. But does it matter? What would the profit of man if he gained the whole world and lost his soul? 
I pray today that you get a greater new life. A greater new life. A greater. A greater. A greater. A greater new life. I hear, I hear, I, I hear, I, I, I hear you. Down through the years, God, Lord Jesus. The Lord's been good to me. Oh, down. Yeah. 